Hey guys, so as you can probably tell from the title of this video and the icon for, for this video, you can probably tell what this video is about, and that is Comic Con and the purchasing of the badges for this convention. I've been wanting to go to Comic Con for a pretty long time. I became aware of it in the early 2000s. Um, I followed it ever since. I've always wanted to go. It was one of those bucket list things that's like, I want to go to Comic Con experience it at least once and I'll be just completely happy for the fact that I've actually attended once and you know have that under my belt and this year is probably the first year that I've am financially and also the timing is just perfect for me to attend this event and I wanted to attend this year and this morning was the morning where those who wanted to attend we're going to be able to purchase their badges to attend Comic Con 2013. Now, on the Comic Con website, you it tells you everything you need to do. You have to become a member and have a member ID to then you know receive an email where in the email you have a link which then sends you to this page that at nine o'clock Pacific time, twelve o'clock my time, because I'm on the East Coast that you would click on it and then you would be then put into this waiting room as they called it the epic waiting room or as I like to now call it the epic fail um, and you would then be able to purchase the ticket because you would be in this waiting room you'll get a certain number and then once that number clocked down you would then be able to purchase whatever tickets or badges there were left now in this email on their website on the actual waiting room page it states what you need to not do and it states once you click the registration button to go into the waiting room to not refresh the page and pretty much that's what I personally did and a lot of people did but um that's not how it worked this year. This year, it was pretty much, from my understanding, if you didn't listen to Comic-Con and their instructions of how to uh, get into the waiting room, you were guaranteed a ticket or a badge, or at least you were able to get a badge. Because those who follow the directions were basically effed over by this system of purchasing badges. Uh, Everybody that I know that tried to purchase a badge pretty much had problems. Um, I want to name some people. Jason, Metal Meat Rod, who pretty much held my hand throughout this whole process, which I want to greatly thank him for. He, unfortunately, was kicked out of the waiting room. And then when he tried to get back in, it basically gave him a message stating that the waiting room was completely full. There was no more room for anybody else so he was basically you know thrown to the side um, then Scott Menzo who I also want to thank and his fiance who also helped me out he had issues as well I don't know exactly what his problem was I don't know if the page loaded and he aired out and he then he wasn't able to get back in but he also had a problem he wasn't even able to get into the waiting room and then everybody else that I know just wasn't able to do absolutely nothing when it came to clicking that green button me personally the way I did it, since I heard so many horror stories from last year, I made sure to have this epic setup. And I pretty much what I did, I had four different computers with the browsers open, and at 12 o'clock my time, those green buttons were clicked, and then I was, you know, put into the waiting room. Now, the first browser to actually load into the waiting room, it took a good 15 minutes for it to actually load from my understanding because I wasn't really paying attention to that one. I was paying more attention to my computer because I thought my MacBook Pro, which I purchased and paid like 1500 for, would have been definitely the first one to get into the room. Didn't get into the room. Actually, a PC was, was actually the one that loaded the page first, which... Is something that I don't really want to talk about but anyways um, yeah that one loaded and I was like I'm in I'm actually in and this is after the fact that I've been told by Scott and Jason that they were either kicked out 
or weren't able to get in or they aired out or, you know, they had their issues or their pages weren't loading at all. And I looked at the number and I was at 20,000 and something. And I'm like, okay, this number is pretty bad, but it's not that bad. I may have a chance to purchase these badges, which was, you know, great. I was happy. <sighs> so I'm in the page. I can see that I'm in the page. And at the bottom of state, this page is supposed to refresh every 120 seconds. 120 seconds really did pass. 30 minutes passed and the page never refreshed. It stayed the same and never refreshed. Basically, the page just was frozen. And seeing how it states on that very page, and it, I saw it on the Comic-Con website in the email they sent out, that I'm not supposed to refresh the page. Obviously, I didn't refresh the page. I just sat there and just waited. Um, the other thing about that email there was supposed to be sent out to all the Comic-Con members with the link for the registration. Not everybody got it because Jason didn't get it. And then several other people from what I saw from the Comic-Con Comic -Con Facebook page also did not get the link. And it's funny, if you go to the Comic-Con Facebook page and just read the comments, of the issues people had trying to get to this registration page, it's so overwhelming. I, I'm honestly, I honor, I don't understand how the tickets got sold out or were actually sold because so many people had issues that I, I'm not even exactly sure how people were able to purchase a ticket, but that's another different story. So, anyways, so I waited and it never loaded. And slowly the tickets were being, or the badges actually, badges, tickets, passes, were being sold out. And I think an hour has already passed and then one of the other computers browser loads and I'm at 17,000 right now and I'm like, whoa, I'm even closer with this one. And it sat there and that browser never refreshed either. And then I want to say an hour and 30 has passed and another computer finally loads and I'm at 9,000 and yeah that one doesn't refresh either now these are four different computers two PCs two Macs one of the Macs loaded my MacBook Pro didn't load whatsoever which is unfortunately unfortunate and then the two PCs loaded and I was running on Windows 7 on one of the PC, I believe, and then I think Vista. I'm not exactly. No, I think the both both of the PCs were Windows 7. Um, one of my MacBooks that loaded was actually an OS from 2007, and then of course my most latest computer, which is my MacBook Pro, which is current, and that didn't load at all. At all. So it was obviously had to do something with them. It didn't have to do with the computers. It. I don't think it had anything to do with my connection because again, a lot of people throughout all over United States and the world had this issue as well. So I know it had nothing to do with the connection on my end and it had, and my dog's barking. So I know it had nothing to do with the connection on my end. That's for sure. So it obviously had to do something with Comic-Con. So this is my issue though. We're in 2013. Our technology is pretty advanced and I know Comic-Con is not a profit convention. I know they don't make a humongous profit. At least that's what I've read. I don't know if I completely believe that. But studios really depend on this convention to promote their movies or television shows, uh, video games, all kinds of different things. They use this convention to promote themselves. I would think at this point they would be up to a level where issues like this just don't happen because Again, the Facebook page, when I was reading it, somebody actually made it into the waiting room and they were numbered 300 and something. And their page never refreshed. And them being good listeners, because it's good to listen, they didn't refresh their page because they were told not to by Comic-Con. And this person didn't get a badge and yet they were at 300. So the whole thing about being first come, first served, as it stated within in so many words on the comic-con website um is completely false this is completely a lottery at this point it's whoever is able to have 
their connection, their computers, their browsers connect to the actual system that they have to actually connect are the ones who are going to be able to purchase badges. The other thing that I found really interesting was when I was reading these comments by people, people actually stated that they actually refreshed their page and they weren't kicked out. They were actually put into the waiting room and were actually had a lower number than those who were already in the waiting room and then they were able to purchase their badges. So those who didn't listen to Comic Con either on purpose or by mistake and refreshed their page, they were able to get tickets to this, to this event doing exactly what Comic Con stated for them not to do. So I don't understand how that's even fair or why Comic-Con asked us to do something when their system is completely flawed in so many ways. I mean, if they can't handle the amount of traffic they get, maybe it's time for them to move on to a different form of selling these tickets that makes it completely fair for everybody. I wouldn't be upset with the fact I didn't get a badge if it's the fact that I just did not click that button on time, that I'm a second too late. I'm fine with that. But the fact is that I was able to get into that room and yet my page didn't load because of some F up by Comic-Con and the system they have when it comes to purchasing tickets. And then hearing stories of people who refreshed their page doing exactly what I was told not to do and I listened to that instruction and they were able to get badges upsets me. It really does. It's like, wow, really? That's that's great how that works. So it's basically a lottery or it's basically just doing what you're told not to do and you will get rewarded for doing what you were told not to do. Now, the other thing that I thought was just, wow, really? Was the fact on the Comic-Con page, it states, if you have the issue where the page doesn't refresh, to take a screen capture of your screen, call our customer service and email them your, you know, screen capture showing that, hey, look, I have this waiting number and it's not loading. People tried to do that and nobody was able to get a hold of the customer service. It's like the number did not work whatsoever. You called it and you got a busy signal and the one person that I even know even was able to get through that I read on the Facebook page was able to get through was after the fact all of the badges were already sold out and at that point what's the purpose of talking to customer service over badges that don't no, no longer exist so I don't even know how that even worked there like what was the point of the customer service and stating for us to take screen captures of our waiting number if we weren't going to get help regardless of the fact that we were going to show this evidence that, look, we're in the waiting room, the page is not refreshing, what's going on? We didn't, none of, nobody got help. Nobody got help in that aspect. And again, people who were smart enough or, or mistakenly enough to refresh their page were rewarded by getting badges. And then there was the few, very few people who were able to get badges doing the way they were told to do it which I would love to meet this person and see how they did it and what was their whole setup because I honestly don't know how these tickets sold out like they did because so many people had problems. I mean, did everybody refresh? I mean, I don't understand. Like, But even refreshing wasn't the, the, the answer to it because I know people who did refresh and they were basically kicked out and they weren't able to get back in once they did it. It just wasn't possible. So I'm not sure how that works. But the other thing that really gets to me was as soon as the whole thing was over it's sold out people have moved on they realized we're never gonna get comic-con tickets for this year craigslist tickets you know, badges whatever you guys want to call them whatever's start showing up on craigslist people who were able to purchase badges magically are now selling the badges for way more than what they were being sold on on Comic-Con. And that just, that really gets me because these people obviously can care less about the convention. They're just purchasing them to sell them for to make a profit off of it. While people 
who actually want to go to the convention, like myself and like so many other people, just were basically screwed over because of a flawed system that didn't really work. So I don't know why it's like this. Again, studios depend on this convention and different outlets depend on this convention and yet the way these tickets are sold the whole system seems so ancient why is it so broken this system of theirs it just doesn't make any sense if they know they're going to get this amount of traffic they should test the system more or outsource to some other company who's able to handle it obviously they don't they're not able to handle it this is just not fair that people who follow directions get into the page when they're supposed to don't get a badge or aren't able to get a badge regardless of the fact they did what they were so told to do by the actual people who handle this event it's just very unfortunate and honestly after experience what I did and seeing how flawed this all is I don't know if I ever want to ever attempt to go to Comic-Con again. I mean, I was really stressed out this morning. Like, ah, I really want to get these tickets. And I don't know absolutely nobody of all the people who are going to go. I don't know anybody who was able to get a badge. Pretty much people who are able to get a badge, like truly able to get a badge, are people who are able to get press badges or people who have attended the event before and get the actual badge at the comic con of that year for the following year but anybody else who didn't do that who isn't a press person we basically either have to wait for the refund badges to go on sale or we have to do it the way that i've been told you're better off not doing it because you can get banned from comic con for life and that's going through craigslist and ebay and purchasing it from those a-holes who were able to get badges and then all they got the badges for was to make a profit off of it, not to really actually attend the of, not to actually attend the event. So yeah, I just wanted to get that off my chest because it's been bothering me all day. So I'm out. Bye.